We have here, again, another doll that every collector, if they could dream to have a list of 10 dolls they would own in their collection, surely one of them would be the very beautiful doll by Adelaide Hooray, of which we have a very gorgeous example here today. Made about 1865, uh, she has her original wig, which I'm gonna turn it around so you can see it. She has the features that you want to find in a Hooray if you can, uh, because they don't all have a swivel neck, this one does. She's made a bisque, not porcelain, which is considered by many collectors to be what they would call more desirable. And she has that wonderful, wonderful, dreamy look to her eyes with the little glaze on the under part of the, of the painted eye that give it that almost this, such a realistic look. Her body is very interesting. About the same time that Adelaide Hurade was making her doll, a gentleman in Paris, Mr. Clement, who was actually a shoemaker. He made leather shoes, and so he was able to make molds for making leather shoes, which is how they were made. The kid would be stretched over the mold and then stitched together. And he came up with the idea, well, I like that Adelaide Hooray doll, but she has that gutta percha body, which is kind of fragile. How about if I use that same body mold, but I made it out of leather, which would be more durable? And that is exactly what he did. And this Hooray has the leather body, known as the blown leather body, it's actually like a stretched, like a molded leather body, hollow inside, so the doll is very light. It's a very durable material, and this is what she has. She has the blown leather body, the hollow leather body made by Clement, and the gorgeous bisque head um, by Adelaide Hooray. The doll was featured in the book, um, the Hooray book, written by Francois and Danielle Timer. She is shown in there, and she comes with I'm only showing you part of it, this extraordinary trousseau. Look at this dress. Let me turn different dresses around while I'm showing you their construction. Gorgeous dresses of the time period. Very, very beautiful aqua satin. satin. Look at this one. I love this. Now you see her, she has this wonderful little cape. Now watch, we lift the cape off and the gown is just as lovely as the cape. Beautiful handwork around the bottom of it, just outstanding work. And um, so if anyone knows me, they know that I love mauve. And since this hooray seems to have her preponderance of costumes with mauve hints, you know that I just think she's really special. This is a wonderful gown. We showed her wearing this in our initial brochure and then we changed her dress so she could be wearing a different one for this. There are about three other costumes, various shoes, hat, wonderful wonderful other pieces. A beautiful choice, choice for Hooray that anyone wishes to finally own one of these dolls, this could be the one. We have many beautiful lady dolls to offer in the exhibition, I only wanted to wonder, and I just have a few examples of them here. Many beautiful porcelain dolls, and you collect them because of their facial expressions and their coiffures and their regal postures, and here's one of the finest ones. Again, has her story with her a bit very, very wonderful because she was originally owned by Madeline Merrill, and she appears in her book, The Art of the Doll which is very wonderful. And look, when I turn her around, look at this, look at that nose, look at that facial, the shape of that facial chin, it is absolutely wonderful. Little piquant smile, deeply sculpted eyes, very high, elegant throat, and a beautiful coiffure, and hidden inside her shoulder plate, guess what? The blue mark of KPM. So she is assigned KPM. She has her original provenance of ownership. She has one, two, three, count them, blue ribbon awards and her original costume. Absolutely wonderful. Next to her is a very early mystery lady of paper mache. Um, the maker is not identified as of this point, but her hairstyle certainly is very, very distinctive as we would all recognize of the Queen Victoria hairstyles of that time period with the long braids looped down over the years. Very, very distinctive facial modeling, almost like a portrait of her. And the braided chignon in the back and beautiful little blue glass enamel eyes. A very elegant portrait and a very distinctive modeling of the chin, fine early costume. In the front, uh, we have a wonderful collection of bisque ladies with sculpted hair in this exhibition that you will want to see. And this one I brought out to you, I liked it particularly because she's so petite and you don't find the small ones with such detail that often. But look, this is a sculpted and painted necklace. 
earrings, bracelets on both hands, gilt painted bracelets, very, very rare. And when you turn her around, wonderful green snood and black barrette holding her hair in place. Very beautiful doll. And next to her, just as a little novelty, and this collection is full of these wonderful, unusual novelty pieces, is a sewing companion lady. It is a German bisque lady with sculpted hair, and then her body is formed by, as a pin cushion with all of these little embroidered, um, silk-covered, I guess, little wings coming down with little constructed pockets to hold a thimble, to hold the thread to hold various needles, to hold the little scissors. Turning it around, you can see. In the back, you have another a thimble and a scissors, a wonderful strawberry pin cushion. She is a great, great piece. They were no, called sewing companions, and I guess maybe we'd do more sewing today if we had wonderful novelties like this sitting at our side um, to keep us company and cheer us on. The French poupées, of which there are probably 25 in this exhibition, including an extraordinary collection of little size zero and size one poupées that are so hard to find. But what I'm showing you here are two that I found to be really remarkable because of their original gowns that they are wearing. Uh, this particular girl has a very beautiful face and her original gown, again, in the wonderful and typical color combination of the bronze green and teal blue, very typical combination and look at the extended train with the original ribbons on this beautiful girl. Wonderful, wonderful doll. And another one in her entirely original costume, and this time with a coral rose and sort of a, a taupey gray color, very, very beautiful. And I'll turn her around. You can see her wonderful original wig with those little, they call them flotant curls, which I love. And the detail in this costume is so extraordinary. One of the things that people told me once about French fashion, not just French fashion dolls, but French fashion was they always went to the nth degree and then they'd look back on it and take one thing off because maybe they had gone too far. And that is probably the secret of the gorgeous French designer costumes that have been done both for people and dolls over the years. They always have just, they go just far enough and they're perfect and that's what this doll does. Absolutely wonderful treasures. Look at her little boots, aren't they beautiful? And then I wanted to show you this because one of the pivotal um, poupées of the 1870 period is what is known as the Smiling Brew, um, deposed by Leon Casimir Brew. He actually deposed this face um, with that little Pequant smile, the inspiration for the face is not really clarified at this time. It might have been based on a sculpture of an angel at the Reims uh, Cathedral, um, is proposed by some. It might have been a portrait of the Empress Eugenie. So different hypotheses. However, it was so popular, I have here three examples of three different sizes to show you. It not only came in a variety of sizes, but it came with a kid body or a wooden body. It came with a kid body with wooden arms. It came with a kid body with bisque arms. So many different variations of very beloved, understandably and deservedly so, of a beautiful, gentle, smiling face lady. So I believe that you can say this about dolls. I only wanted to wonder. And I just brought here a cross section of some of the 500 dolls that we'll be presenting in our exhibition to show you how how doll makers try to always present their dolls in such ways that ch a child would wonder. Dolls in extraordinary original costumes, this matched pair right here in the pink and blue, absolutely gorgeous from uh, French doll makers. A beautiful, dainty Schmidt. And at some point, she was used for the model from a, play, a greeting card that was done, and we have that greeting card that goes with her. A tiny little Steiner, just the tiniest little size possible a beautiful AT in a size that is, you, you simply don't find it. In fact, that AT is so tiny, she's the same size as the wonderful uh, German all bisque doll known as the French wrestler for some unfathomable reason um, that's standing next to her. Wonderful. Look, even, even these kind of luxury things you only wanted to wonder were made. You see this wonderful marquee standing here with his fat little belly, but look, but look. He comes apart. He was a candy container. Imagine, isn't it great enough to have received a little box of candies, but to have him housed inside this marquee is extraordinary. 
Let me put him down because I'm going to show you a few more very, very special things. We have here, again, dolls with provenance. Look at this gorgeous Dewey's Cochran designed American child done for F&B, impeccable costume. And tucked inside her shirt is her original price tag from Marshall Fields, where she was sold for $13. Very, very nice, which was a pretty extraordinary price at the time in the 1930s, early 40s, when she was sold. Very beautiful doll. Marshall Fields, very underrated as something that might be, like if you wanted to have a dream world, wouldn't you like to be back plunged in their toy department in the beginning of the 1900s? And also for Marshall Fields, I've got to put her down. This was also... Um, purchased at Marshall Fields. Actually, the Marshall Fields buyer bought this at the Royal London Exhibition um, during the coronation of, the, of King Edward, and he is never found. This was done by the Farnell Company, and he is never found in this costume. He's always in like the, um, the Scottish Regentry or the Royal Guard, but to have him in his actual coronation costume with a wonderful detail all around is extraordinary. And he was purchased um, by the buyer at Marshall Fields from that exhibition, brought back, and then purchased by Emily Cash, who had the collection of Dorothy Heiser dolls that we showed you. Very, very fine. Remained in that family trust until this time. And then I have to put him down because I need a little room to turn her sideways and show you. So here's a child, and they're presented. Here a child. This is great. And you have, you're given this little box. You say, oh, that's a beautiful box. It's got a pretty little picture of a girl on a swing on the cover. I really like it. And then you open one side, and you see a little girl sitting on a swing, just like the cover. And on the bottom of that box, you see another costume. You see perfume bottles, a little toy lamb, toiletries, combs, a little sailor outfit. Absolutely wonderful. And then, but wait, there's more. You open the other side, and I'm sorry, her wig is loose. We'll just put that back on her. Okay, you have additional costumes and mirrors and soap and a little powder puff and other accoutrements. And if you looked along the sides, you saw all her toys that she has to play with. A set of bowling pins, a little fishing basket, a butterfly net. This is an absolutely extraordinary piece. Um, in just totally original, never been played with. A dream to find this. I bet her little hat fell off again, did it? That's okay. The wind is blowing in her hair. If you were a child, that's what you would imagine. What a dream piece to find. We'll close her little case up. And then we wanted to show you we have the collection from the private collection of Shirley Temple as a child. And this was one of the wonderful dolls that was sold in that collection, including a photograph of Shirley herself holding the doll during the filming of the movie Stowaway. And this has come back to us now for auction again. Very, very unique doll, truly one of a kind. Has all the appearances of being a Lenchy, and we don't know if it is or isn't. A wonderful doll from her private collection. And finally, to show you from this group of just diverse things, we have Daisy. Daisy was offered by Ladies Home Journal beginning in 1912. It was always one doll. It was the Kessner 171 model in this size. This is a totally original one. She has her original box, her shoes, her little chemise. And Daisy was called the doll who came to life. Ladies Home Journal had been doing their very, very popular Letty Lane paper dolls. And so many people said, oh, I love that paper doll. I wait for it every month. I just wish it was a doll. And they came up, Ladies Home Journal, with the idea of having the Lady Lane paper doll made into a doll. They entitled the series, The Doll Who Came to Life. And this was Daisy. And every month they would do it, Daisy going to the seashore, Daisy as a bride, Daisy going to school. And they would show different costumes um, that you could order the patterns for and make for your doll. Now, how did you get the doll? You sold subscriptions to Ladies Home Journal, of course, a technique that continued right on through the entire 1900s in per magazines getting subscriptions. Impossible to find this doll today, and to find it in this condition, she comes with about eight magazines with the various um, monthly offerings that were made. A wonderful, wonderful doll.